Aslan Karatas. I'm from uh, University of Illinois, uh, Chicago. I'm an assistant, a clinical assistant professor. They're also director of uh, built environment and infrastructure lab. So this uh, study, innovative model for forecasting trailer usage for prefab, uh, exterior wall panels is a collaborative study with one of my uh, PhD students. He's also uh, owner of a, a prefab company and also another colleague from Lawrence Tech University who help us with the statistical analysis uh, of this study. So prefab construction is getting uh, more and more important for construction industry, as, as, especially after COVID, uh, contractors have uh, getting uh, more demand towards prefab construction because of their more predictable, uh, less risky uh, schedule. So that also puts another uh, responsibility on the uh, prefab companies, especially for engineer to order prefab companies. They try to automate their uh, operations as much as possible so they can minimize the risks and also provide more accuracy to the, uh, the contractors as they're getting, um, as they're getting more uh, uh, work or projects from them. So here, what we are seeing is a, uh, just an uh, example of wall panels they all come with different dimensions, uh, different thickness, different, uh, different sizes, different configurations. So that, that's adding a challenge for the engineer to order prefab companies, especially for during the uh, transportation stage of. So currently the existing situation is uh, how many trucks needed, how many trailers needed to transport these different wall panels to the construction site. It only depends on the estimator's uh, own judgment, so personal judgment based on the experience, based on you know the uh, similar projects they they did in the past. So the estimator just come up with okay, this is how many trailers we need. But most most of the time, this is not the optimal uh, schedule or optimal number for the uh, engineer to order prefab companies. <clears throat> Because usually it's more than what is needed because you know, estimators try to be on the safer side. They're kind of less um, you know, resistant to take uh, risks. So they try to maximize their number of trailers as much as possible. But this is getting, uh, this is putting a little bit uh, uh, extra you know, uh, risk on the engineer to order companies because they try to minimize their transportation costs at the same time. So that's why this study become important and comes from these prefab companies to us. They try to come up with a forecasting model to optimize or predict the, uh, the number of tailors needed once they receive the order for a project. So as I mentioned before, the, uh, the panels that it's an example here, how they're loaded on a truck. So the thickness of, uh, the, uh, of the panels are changing based on their finish type. So you're seeing here frame, backup, uh, EIFS, and then the other. So they're planning an order of relative thickness. So the frame one, if they only have the frame finish, that means it's the, um, it's the shortest, lowest in terms of the thickness, and it's getting the other uh, part, it's getting thicker. So that also another uh, indication that as the panels are getting thicker, that means that they're getting bigger and then they're, uh, they're getting heavier and bulkier. So that adds a little bit uh, extra uh, risk for the trailer uh, usage. So they try, we try to minimize uh, the risks also associated with the transportation cost as well in this model. So uh, as I mentioned that you most of the time the panels are transported within the 700 miles radius of the engineer to order uh, prefab facilities. So it's important how they're being loaded up to uh, the trailers and how many trailers needed to transport them to their end location. So with this in mind, the model is about the forecasting the trailers necessary for project at the initial pricing. So that's usually happening when during the very early design stage when not so many things are uh, been done yet. So, but they also, the engineer to order companies also want to be have a firm fixed price uh, 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 for fixed price bids. So they try to come up with the, uh, the as accurate as possible in terms of the price, they, the code they provided to the contractors. And to say when, while the, uh, the design is not in the, you know, uh, is not in the final stage. 
So the idea is here to reduce the potential risk, financial risk associated with poorly predicted trailer quantities. As I mentioned before, currently it's been done only by the estimators, their own personal judgment. So with this, uh, to, to able to develop this model, we, uh, we, do, we collect data from uh, various companies across the US. And also we use a supervised machine learning algorithms to uh, come up with this forecasting model. Uh, so here, I think the challenging part was collecting this data because uh, these companies, uh, they're doing a good job, but unfortunately they don't record their data. So it was, that part was a little bit challenging, but thanks to, uh, my PhD student and his network, we're able to access to uh, 10 uh, ETO energy to order uh, companies and then having their one, 107 completed projects in the last four years. So uh, it's, I think it's worth not worth to mention that this is an ongoing project. So the results that I'm gonna present today is a preliminary uh, analysis, uh, the results analysis that we got from this 107 completed projects but we still keep uh, collecting data to improve our model. So our data includes the, the, the data we asked from the, these companies, the total panel, the wall panel square footage, the number of panels, because again, the thickness, uh, different uh, st structural configuration uh, may change uh, the number of panels versus the square footage, and how many trips, how many trailers uh, needed for that actual completed projects, along with the panel structural configuration, especially their uh, finish type. So once we collect the data, we, we categorize them in four groups. Uh, they're based on, again, uh, the thickness of the panels, which is the, uh, for, for the experts, that's the main, uh, one of the main variables that will affect the, uh, the number of trailers. So we have the frame only, uh, one of the categories backup, uh, EIFS and the other uh, based on the thickness of the, the panels. So we use, uh, we utilize R uh, for our data analysis and then we utilize the uh, supervised machine learning algorithm. So this is the first equation we received uh, for, uh, for this regression analysis for the forecasting number of trailers uh, needed for this, uh, the model. And here you can see that the square footage panels have impact on it. So they're, they're the continuous variables. Uh, is the, uh, the other uh, finish type, the uh, wall panel finish types are the binary uh, values uh, for the equation. So we use the, uh, the OLS uh, linear regression uh, as it fits well with the, uh, the model itself, as you can see here. I think it's kind of hard to read, but I, maybe I can explain a little bit better. So the one that you're seeing, uh, yeah, here. So this is the square footage versus the number of panels. And these are the each four uh, different types of finish types. So uh, again, the frame only is the one has the, the, the shell of the, the lowest thickness uh, compared to others. And uh, the backup and uh, EIFS, they're the kind of similar thickness level. And the other one has the, uh, the bulk here, the, uh, the heavier ones that you know need a mostly uh, larger uh, quantities of trailers needed to be transport, uh, transported from the uh, the facility to the construction site. And this is the normal distribution of uh, of the model, as you can see here. It fits well uh, with the with the uh, with the data set we have. Again, here what you're seeing here the uh, for the different frame the different finish types. Frame only, backup, EIFS, and uh, and the other. So what we did in terms of the testing is we we took the four uh, projects. Again, this is the initial preliminary analysis, so it's a, still going on. But we initially we took four sample uh, projects, and then we we kind of tested with our model, and also we compare it with uh, asking uh, the the estimators how they come up with you know, number of trailers. So we kind of compare what, the, what we got from the data as a result versus what the estimators estimate in terms of the uh, number of trailers based on that four projects. So these four projects were not included in the data collection, uh, sorry, data analysis. So it's kind of like um, dependent from the, uh, the, the model itself. So this is what we came up with. Again, uh, I think it needs uh, some improvement, but initially it's a good indication that 
model is uh, you know, on, the, on the right track. So what we are seeing here is the model prediction uh, based on a, uh, the project that's given uh, to the model. And then this is what estimator predicted. The, the experience uh, estimator, I think he had a six or eight year of experience in this uh, ETO project. And then this is what actually ended up for the, uh, for this, the project number of trailers. And this is the, we kind of compare, you know, variance by the estimator and awareness by the model. And then what the, the companies want to see at what at the end of the day, in terms of evaluating one by one, you know, at the end of the day for the four projects, what is the total variance of cost? You know, because they want to see, those companies want to see not like individual projects, how the model is affecting, but the like let's say after a month later, how much you know it's profitable using this uh, model versus their uh, existing estimators. So again, this initial uh, preliminary analysis it shows us that the variance by the model is way less, even if they're both still on the negative side. Uh, but uh, the the estimation by the model is, I think, outperforms the uh, the estimators. Uh, for uh, predictions based on this, uh, this four test uh, validation. So as a conclusion, uh, I think our uh, supervised machine learning algorithm, uh, it, it, it performs better than the actual estimator, but, uh, and then the additional expansion of the data set will also reduce the model variance to actual. But the limitations, again, we, we were able to collect 110 data set overall right now, but it still keep going. Uh, so, and then there's some, uh, for example, some specific uh, finish types, they only occur a few times in the data set. So we're hoping that as we're collecting more, more data, it's going to improve the, uh, the overall uh, model uh, equation itself. So as a future study, uh, we, we want to increase the sample size. And then so we will uh, be able to continue to refine the model, improve the model itself. So I hope I was able to finish it on time. It's a tight schedule, uh, but now I think I can open up for questions uh, related with this study. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. So we will now have the Q&A. So if anyone on site have something to ask, you can let our culture know. Yeah. Uh, yes, my question is, um, is your model replicable in a country like Colombia? I mean, uh, where where were your costs taken from? What, what area in the United States? And is it, uh, could we use it here in, in Colombia taking into account that we have the Andy, right? Uh, our transportation costs are way higher than the United States uh, due to that limitation of amount. So uh, could we use it here? I think it can be, yeah, it can be, uh, it can be definitely usable. Uh, for any other countries, applicable or implemental for any other countries. The, the important thing here is, uh, I assume, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, actually one of our sponsors for this project is also a star panel. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Their owner is from Colombia. So he was the one who actually pushing this project itself to use for its own company. Uh, like in terms of you have access to their uh, the square footage panel, uh, and then finish type, uh, I'm pretty sure they're, you know, producing in a very similar way all around the world. So yes, you can definitely, you know, implement it in the, in any other countries than US. But initially the data again come, comes from the, uh, the vendors in the US. You show the cost for the whole transportation process. Uh, how does that impact the price of the modules per square foot or square meter? So, uh, so I think I forgot to mention that when we are developing this data, we didn't include the, the hauling cost, which is we didn't include the transportation cost from, uh, from the facility to the, uh, to the site, because that's not you know, what we're trying to achieve here. The, the companies, uh, the, the, the prefab companies, they just wanna see how many trailers they need up in their facility and then to, you know, to ship it or transport it to the end uh, location. So the hauling cost, uh, transportation cost is not included, just only the initial, you know, uh, with the initial pricing, the initial uh, loading is, was the important factor here. Did I answer your question? Okay, yeah. Okay. 
grab another one. And question. Uh, were there any interesting outliers that your model failed to predict? I think, uh, yeah, I think there are, uh, we, so we collect 100, uh, 107 data and then we, we need to eliminate it like, I believe uh, 14 of them, because uh, I think it's coming from the, uh, there was an inconsistency between, you know, the number of uh, square footage, uh, sorry, square footage versus the panel type, which was found by the, the expert of company owners that it's kind of, you know, there's a huge inconsistency in the, the data. So we, we kind of eliminate those outliers. Uh, but at the same time, I think that another one here is, which I put it in the limitations, some, uh, some data set, they only occur a few times uh, in, the, uh, in the data set, especially with the uh, specific, some very specific uh, you know, structural configurations. So we believe that that may also include you know, some outliers for the, uh, for the model itself. But as we're you know, collecting more data and include, you know, expanding the data set, we believe that we're going to have a better, uh, you know, a better estimation on how those you know, very specific, not highly demanded uh, uh, the, the configurations will have impact on the oral data set. And uh, did you account for rework? We did not. No, the rework is not included in this one. This is, again, with the initial pricing. Uh, with the firm fixed price, how much uh, how much uh, trailers needed? We did not include the rework, but that's a that's a good point. I think we should consider it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so considering the time limit, if no more questions, should we move on? Thank. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>